Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town with me, Lynn About Town, here in my town of sunny Clearwater, Florida. And today, in very modern ways, we are doing a webcam interview because that's what we have to do these days to stay current. And I am with a wonderful Clearwater resident, professional, and a mom, and a golfer, and a great girl, and her name is Debbie Wallace. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Lynn. How are you? I'm great. Have you been having fun with your family? Have you been doing some things you don't normally do with a hectic life you live because you're a professional and your husband's a professional? Um, yes, uh, life has been getting interesting. We have a lot of time on our hands. I can't take them to the park or to a pool. Uh, we do have our own pool here at home, so that helps. But uh, yesterday, the kids were in the garage, and they decided um, that they were going to spray paint our lawn. And I thought, well, why not? I mean, really, no one's outside anyways. So they made a beautiful mural on our front lawn. Oh, how lovely. So Debbie is also um, the founder and president of her own company. It is called Clarity Communications Group. In your own words, let's tell the good folks what Clarity Communications Group is all about. Sure. Um, well, my background is a PR and marketing expert, and um, we are a PR firm. Um, so we offer uh, marketing, social media marketing, media relations, um, management coaching for presentations and meetings. And I also have a background in the investment industry. So I'm able to offer investor relations and financial consulting services as well. So our target clients are not only private companies, but also public emerging growth companies as well. Wonderful. You know, you said something that I, I didn't even quite understand was a career or a, or an option uh, with regard to the coaching. Explain that a little bit because I, I honestly did not know such a thing existed. Coaching uh, management to do uh, like presentations and meetings, preparing them for meetings with certain um, publics. So let's say it's an investor. Um, I would do the research on who the investor is. I would prepare them for a meeting. I would make sure that there was a good PowerPoint presentation. And then I would give them coaching on presenting to this particular public. So if you're, in uh, if you're presenting to an investor, it would be different than if you're um, sitting down and having a meeting with um, media. Sure. So I would coach them through that. Some are already previously coached, but uh, these are typically emerging growth companies that I work with, and I find that um, coaching is, is usually needed. Yeah, I mean, look, we have our strengths, and we, right. we often know what they are, and we also also often know what we're not strong in. So I, I would assume that's a very beneficial and needed uh, activity. So I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So now, um, who are your target clients for your business? Our target clients are private and public emerging growth companies. Uh, I also mentor a lot of local companies uh, just because I've owned and operated one of my own, um, but mainly private and public emerging growth companies. That's excellent. And so with all the options today, they can be far away, I would imagine. It doesn't matter. Look at us. We're not in the same room. <laughs> right. Well, they would be hiring me to do, uh, you know, public relations, uh, if it's a public company investor relation, uh, social media is online, media relations, almost everything can be done at a distance. And now, especially with uh, the new era of Zoom, um, it's becoming more and more common to do things from a distance. Yes, it is. So what is an angel investor? I heard this term and I was like, I've got to, I've got to have her tell the world because I can't be the only one who doesn't know what that is. Right. Um, an angel investor uh, is a person who supports businesses financially by investing their private money or private capital. And it's typically in small or newly established companies or emerging growth companies. Uh, I invested in my first, it was a private company that went public. So it was private going public when I was, I was 20. I was wow. still in college. So yeah, that was, a, that was a big day for me. But since then I've invested in, in several. So that's that's the technical term of what an angel investor is. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack just a tad because I'm picturing you, right? I only know you uh, over the last three four years, and I'm picturing you as a gorgeous twenty year old with all these ideas. And how 
Come on, how proud were your parents of you? They must have known they had a little phenom on their hands. And at a young age, my mom actually got me uh, interested in investments. Um, she invested um, mostly bonds and mutual funds. This great story. Uh, I remember standing in line at the bank with my mom and I was getting bored. And so I asked her what we were doing. And she said, well, I'm going to buy you a bond. And I'm seven years old, I think. And I'm thinking, OK, well, what is a bond? And the way she explained it to me, that it was a way to use your money to make more money. And it completely changed my life. And I remember a light bulb going off. And from that day on, I was I was very laser focused on uh, spending my life one way or another investing. And that's what uh, drew me to continuing to invest and working in the investment industry. That's incredible. Look at that. What does that tell us for today? I mean, you you have the living example. Is that something we should be talking to our kids about? Well, in my family, I mean, we learned to invest from uh, a young age. You just put a percentage of your money aside. Uh, if you're conservative, it would be like maybe just in a savings account, mutual funds, and then eventually um, a 401k and moving on from there. So it was a very uh, normal pattern in my family. Uh, to do that. I specifically remember that day of standing in line at the bank and um, and that light bulb going off. And I kind of built my future based on that. I knew I had to go to college, even though I didn't do great in school when I was younger. <laughs> it was that idea that I really wanted to work in the industry that pushed me uh, to going through college and working in the investment indus- industry. You know, isn't that what we do, right? We have these kids and we just put I- it forward. Right. Yeah, I I love it. I love spending time with my kids. Uh, They are uh, eight and 10 now. And I actually started introducing my daughter the last couple of weeks to investments because right now with what's going on in the investment industry, I've been paying very close attention. She's been asking, she's been home and asking what I'm doing and um, introducing her to it and seeing her interest is, is really exciting for me. That's um, wonderful. And, and I can't wait for them, you know, maybe once they're teenagers to actually uh, introduce them to my company and be at board meetings and, and really introduce them to the world and, and entrepreneurship and investing and everything that I've been doing. So I, I hope that when they get older, they do have some interest. Absolutely. But they're getting they're getting it from someone who cares about them and also someone who's passionate about it. And I, I want to just say that I'm available for adoption uh, should you want to teach me like you teach a 10 year old, that's probably the right level. Right. And I'm up for learning. So, yeah. And I love talking about it. I mean, I really do. It was, um, it was my world for many, many years. Um, from the age of 20, um, I started working in the investment industry as well. Uh, I was still in college. I worked for the largest brokerage firm, the largest fund company. I was investing in stocks. So, um, I really didn't know a world outside of that until uh, I moved here from Toronto. And um, so anytime, if you want to sit down and talk about investments and stocks, I'm anytime, Lynn. I love it. I love it. Thank you. And I will take you up on that. Tell me about being an entrepreneur, because we are in some very interesting times. And I think it's a timely, let's put it this way. I think that some people are now going, no way. And some people are going, now's a great opportunity. And so what's your take on that? I mean, entrepreneurship has just always been a part of who I am. It's a part of my DNA, kind of like investing. It's just always been there. I don't know where it came from. I, I was just introduced to it and it was an aha moment. And um, I became interested in entrepreneurship in college uh, with one of my degrees. I started studying entrepreneurship. And I continued studying entrepreneurship by reading books. I found it fascinating how some people uh, could be so successful and some couldn't. And what were those uh, successful traits? But I also knew I wanted to work in the investment industry. So um, my career actually started in the investment industry in corporate. And I continued looking for something uh, where I could own and operate my own company as well, but still working in the investment industry. And finally, I found an opportunity to become a partner in a consulting company in Toronto, where I was basically the middleman between public companies and the investment industry. Uh, So on one side, I was working with amazing like-minded entrepreneurs and the other side, the investment industry, it was was a dream job. So for other people, um, I mean, if if you have those dreams as well, like mine came to me when I was a young girl. So if you go back to being 
you know, a kid, and this might be a really good opportunity for that because uh, some people are being laid off. If your company is closed at the moment and you want to reevaluate your life, I mean, really, it could be new beginnings. So if you go back to your dreams and if you want to be an entrepreneur, you can do it. Um, if you want to change your career, you can do it. Um, personally, I, I love being an entrepreneur because it allows me to be me and be very creative. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that is a good thing for a mom to teach their kids as well. So you're, you're right on the money. <laughs> well, if there's one thing I've learned is that, I mean, your dreams can come true. If you can dream it, um, then it, it, you can make it happen. I'm able to kind of put aside uh, the problems and things that I can't control and focus on the things that I can, which is my future. Um, so if you're a small business owner, the future of your company, uh, reevaluate your market um, through surveys, uh, reevaluate your marketing plan. Um, you'll have to be a bit more creative now um, with, the, um, with what we're entering into. Um, and as an entrepreneur or an individual who's been laid off, you know, look at the opportunities. Is this, is this an opportunity to look at a uh, possibly a new career and um, you know go back to when you were a little kid did you achieve all those goals that you wanted to if not hey it's it's open seas right now like really dream big and go after it and you can do it um you know we won't be in this terrible time forever and that's another thing you learn in the investment industry bull market bear market what, what goes around comes around so it will eventually come back and, and sure. just be prepared and sure. have a plan and um and again focus on your purpose I was thinking about that the other day because, of course, you know, there are uncertainties, but then I like to think of the certainties. And you're seeing it with the investors trading right now. It's very volatile. I mean, you have to have a stomach for trading stocks right now, but it will hit a bottom. And, you know, we do have to be a little grateful because we entered this um, completely unknown, unpredicted problem uh, with one of the best economies we've ever been in with a president who has been there in his own business where you know the real estate market hit crash he knows how to make a comeback so there's no doubt in my mind you know we entered this as a strong economy we're going to come right back absolutely well i'm with you on that whenever you have a negative thought push it out with a positive one um and it's something you have to uh, practice a little bit mm. but once you become at it it's incredible that negative thought comes in you push it out with something that you're grateful for I and love it. It's a, it's, that's that is simple math. I mean, that is, and yet something you, we can all apply. Doesn't matter what walk of life, we can totally apply that. Mm -hmm.